welcome to this session. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, new features that we're currently working on and that will be um, in Baselight soon. And I have a couple of things to show, so let's get started. The first new tool I want to show you is our lens correction tool. It's intended to remove distortion uh, introduced by lenses. So this one here is a GoPro shot and has a quite strong distortion. The tool is in the transforms menu. We'll ship the tool also with a couple of uh, presets, but um, I think the most powerful mode to use it is the manual mode. And it uh, works like this. You put points on a line into the image and the line that you put the points on should be something straight in the original scene. And then the tool will try to get that line to be straight and here I'm adding a second line, so you can add as many lines as you want, and then it tries to um, go further. Here we end up with something like this. Here we have a similar shot from the same camera. We can also see if we just copy-paste the same setting. And this is working quite well. Another topic are anamorphic lenses. So here I already prepared this. So this is the uncorrected image, and this is with the correction, or maybe I'm before after without the overlays so we see it also works in this case and here another one so this is shot with a vintage uh, anamorphic lens and going from here to here one thing to note is that the tool will also be able to add back the distortion so you could do a workflow of removing the distortion then doing some maybe compositing or paint work and then adding back the original distortion on the image so the next thing is uh, filtering of tracks. And what I already prepared here is a shape on the lady's uh, side of the face. And because we have a really strong flicker of the light, the shape is uh, also flickering quite a lot. So this feature works like this. I will zoom in here to make it a little bit more obvious what it's doing. Here we see the track. and. Uh, on the tracker, I have the, the filtering section, so I can say remove the shake and noise. And here with that threshold slider, I can decide wh what is noise and uh, what is uh, motion that I want to keep. And here you can maybe see that uh, thin line here, that's basically the result of the filtering, so it's a smoother um, curve. And if I, uh, if I apply this and we check out the position of the of the shape, we see that uh, all the jittering is gone. And another thing I want to show here with that second shape, uh, subtracting the eye, is how easy it is to reuse um, a track uh, from another shape. You just go here on the tracker strip and there you will have a list of all the other trackers that you already created for that shot and this shape will also then be uh, linked to the same track. Next topic is the hue angle keyer, so our HSV keyer. We spent a lot of time uh, reworking this one. We added more controls to it, so we have uh, separate uh, roll-offs for um, left and right for the hue and the saturation. Also, we see these histograms here and a kind of a color wheel with a vector scope overlaid. And to show you how the improvement goes from the old version, so this is the old hue angle that we have in base light so far. And I will try to key um, uh, the lips of the actress here. And we see the, the result of the matte looks uh, something like this. And, and of course, we can now continue to rework, uh, to work on that matte, and we will probably get a little bit better result. But just in comparison, I can show you the uh, performance of the new hue angle here. I try to do a similar kind of pick and we end up with something like this and we, even if I zoom out and show you the mat in total you can see that there's not much um, unwanted stuff um, in it and, and of course we can then we can also then refine this mat um, further but you can also see that we improved the, the picking algorithm and also, one of the big uh, new components is we created new color spaces. In this case, the film light HSE color space optimized for this kind of um, keying. So let's try to key the yellow part of the graffiti. I'm picking here and 
Now let's have a look at the hue histogram here. So that's basically uh, just a histogram of all the hues in the picture. And here we see that uh, spike at the yellow color. Uh, and you can see that if I move around, then we can really see that we can find the individual hues quite easily. Uh, the, yeah, the blue and cyanish colors. So, so here there's this uh, cyanish part of the graffiti and here the blue one. And going back to the yellow, it's also quite easy to adjust the roll-offs because we can see that um, on this side here of the histogram, we have a lot of space with not many uh, disturbing objects. So we can have a really huge roll-off to that side. And we all know that uh, bigger roll-offs are always good for keying because we need less blur and we have less artifacts. But on that side here, we have one of these little mountains coming in. So there we maybe should not go that far with the uh, roll-off. But still we keep our center here at the peak and another thing we can use that cloud here for is, or it's a similar case, we can uh, see where the individual points are lying. So my pick is always shown uh, with that small circle. So we see that a uh, blue part is uh, this circle here. Or if I pick on the cyan part, we see it's this small dot here or this uh, small cloud here. And so if I want to key this, but avoid uh, keying the, the other blue parts, I can see that I just need to adjust my roll off on that side so that these two guys are not in the key anymore. And we can see on this side here, the, the area is quite empty. So here we can uh, keep the roll off or maybe even make it a little, a little bit bigger to some extent. The next thing I want to show with the hue angle is uh, another color space to key in. So until now we only used that film light HSE color space. Here I will use the film light HSB color space. That's hue, saturation, brilliance. Daniele gave a talk um, one year ago here about natural colors where he explained the concept of the brilliance. And the short summary is that there's a natural relationship of saturation and brightness of uh, certain colors. And if a color gets too saturated for its brightness, it will, it will then look like a fluorescent color and not like a surface color anymore. So. I can illustrate this here on that shot. If I increase the saturation strongly, you will see that uh, th this green here or th the red around here will start to have a kind of like a glow. It looks like it's a light emitting object. It looks like a fluorescent color. And we develop a color space where we are dividing surface colors from fluorescent colors. And so the brilliance uh, has all the surface colors in the range from zero to dot five. And from dot five to one, it has all the fluorescent colors. And I made a very soft roll off key combination of saturation and brilliance to identify the colors that might become too fluorescent. And I'm then just uh, bringing them down in luminance. I think it's, a, it's an interesting way to approach look development because then we can keep our whole color palette in a very muted kind of way. But you can see that if I now increase the saturation in front of that layer, that my image always stays in this kind of nice uh, pastel and surface color world. So if I just bypass the layer, we go from here to here. Next thing is per pixel alpha. So we're working um, on uh, native support of alpha through the whole stack in base lights. But uh, what we're doing right now is we're having um, an RGB alpha image chain uh, flowing through or uh, uh, image pipeline flowing through the software. And it brings a couple of um, advantages with it. So here I have a background sequence and an, uh, a graphical overlay with, uh, with alpha in it. And to comp that over the background, I just need to insert a blend strip, for example. And we will see that if I play this, uh, that it's natu now naturally compositing the, uh, the foreground with the alpha over the image. Also, we added uh, the common merge uh, operator. So we, we can also do uh, other operations like uh, this. And what we are also doing is we're making our, our, our operators aware of uh, alpha channels. So if I add a blur here in the stack, I can now blur the foreground. And you can see that the foreground blurs naturally along with the alpha. Or another example is uh, the grid warp. So we can, um, so when we warp the foreground, we see we, that we warp the alpha with it um, as well. 
Next topic is the uh, texture tool set. So there is, um, so, uh, so this is already available since Baselight 5.2. Here I have a film scan that has natural halation um, in it. So film halation is reddish glow around uh, sharp highlights, glow around bright sharp objects. Also we see it here. And what I tried on this shot is to find a way to reduce the halation on this image. And I used also our texture tool set for that. And here you see the results. So this is uh, before, this is after. But this is quite a complex stack that I used a texture blend operator and a, and a reference. So it's not so easy to carry that along through the, um, I can also show it here on that one here, through the whole um, stack or through a whole project to copy it over. So what I try to do is to build a more simpler approximation of that thing. That's very easy to carry around. So that this, is, this one here it just consists of these two strips. So the color space operator and the, this strip here. And it goes from here to there. And I used, uh, for this I need to convert to um, a linear color space because that's the natural uh, physics of light and how it behaves. And I, and I need to do it in front of my strip so that also the blend mode is happening in a linear domain. And then I just use the color crosstalk operator with uh, these uh, simple settings and a texture blend mode uh, set to high frequencies and to 50% to do this. And now you might wonder why does anyone remove halation from a, from a film image because that's what's giving it the character and I would totally agree, I would not want to do that. But the uh, nice thing about the color crosstalk is that it has an invert button. So I can just invert what I'm doing in that color crosstalk and that would basically then add this halation that I'm currently removing to any other kind of image. So what I'm doing is I'm copying now these two strips uh, to another shot. Maybe turn the invert here off and we can now check out what this simple thing is doing on images that are not shot on film but where we might want to add some kind of halation. So I can zoom uh, in here and you will see that it's adding this kind of effect and uh, also I made the preset so that the slider is here on 50% so you always have the creative control of do I want a little bit more halation or a little bit less halation on that shot? So you have a, a really huge range in both directions. And also, um, because this is now a simple preset, you can also start to do maybe different colored halations you could do for a sci-fi movie. Maybe a blue colored halation or with a neutral color, of course. And no. So this is without, this is with, and you see it's just breaking a little bit these sharp contrast edges. And when you use it at the bottom of your stack, the nice thing is that your whole grading will react naturally with halation. So if I'm erasing the light level and contrast, you see that we, uh, that we push in more halation now to the image. Also look at the yeah, edges of the legs if I bypass before, after. And, and of course we always have the yeah, full control of how much do we want, but obviously we would not grade that shot uh, that bright. This one here and here we see it's also adding a nice kind of glow to these um, lights. But on, for this one, I would also add an additional texture highlight from our texture tool set on top to, to smooth the um, clipped highlights of the lights even a little bit further. And now we go from here to here. I think a quite a good improvement. So for this example here, I'm not going to use any um, tools that are in development, so everything is uh, already available, but I just think it's a good example how to use the existing tool set to get to an impressive uh, result quite quick. So this shot was uh, filmed with that strong greenish light and it's also intended like that, but uh, we all know that sometimes in post-production I heard some people change their mind and want something different. So, and uh, they are asking us now to have a more neutral color balance uh, on the shot. And I'm using base grade for that. And to speed up uh, the process, I'm just using the match function that will match my white balance to middle gray here on that white belt. Because it's middle gray, it makes it too dark, but I just adjust the luminance and we instantly end up with something like this. But um, that's not the end because now 
the lights turned, the top lights turned magenta because we did a really strong shift in the white balance from green towards magenta. So how to fix them? I will use the color crosstalk operator for this. So, so this is uh, setting the crosstalk of the color channels to each other in a normalized way. Uh, when I raise here the blue contribution to the, to the green channel, we can see that the magenta cast goes away. But we're also changing a little bit the overall color. So I will play with some other controls to maybe get to a better skin tone on the image. And what you might also notice, probably I need to zoom in for that, is that we're having a little bit of a problem here. So that when I do a lot of, uh, a lot of changes, I'm trying to make it more obvious, we get a, a little bit of a blotchy skin tone here. So maybe you see some orange kind of dots. And the problem here is the original color values are so saturated that they don't, that they don't flow nicely through our um, grading stack. So the green values are too saturated. And I will use the compressed gamma tool at the beginning of my stack to solve this. So this will just fix these heavily saturated colors. If I do a before after, you will hopefully see that it's um, getting rid of, uh, easily getting rid of them. Now I can continue with my color crosstalk. I, mean, I also want to have a little bit stronger red, maybe for the, um, yeah, for the costume, maybe something like this. And now I want to key the original green back to the, um, to the background walls. I add a new layer and we talked a lot about hue angle. So I will use the D key this time and add a little bit more to the color volume. Yeah, maybe something like this, blurring the mat a little bit. And here I will use the layer view to blend with a numbered layer. In this case, I will use the already fixed one from the uh, compressed gamut. So layer one. And I also need to select uh, use matte for blend. And if I'm moving the slider over, you, we can see we're now just keying back the original greens to the shot. They, they look a little bit too bright. So I might want to use a blend mode, maybe average. Yeah. And to finish the whole thing, I might want to add a new look, one of our scene looks. For example, the new vision look and it gives us a nice dark kind of green. Or I could also go to a yeah, little bit more toned down palette. So that's also, I guess, giving a nice feel um, for that shot. So I would think um, if you go to the last frame, going quickly from here to here, that's uh, yeah, kind of like a winner look. All right. So thank you for listening and see you next time. <laughs>